but we're just going to jump right into cybersecurity. Um, this kind of hits home for you and I, or really anyone on the East Coast and the South, because recently there was a big cybersecurity issue in the United States that shut down a pipeline. Gas prices went up by quite a lot, and people were hoarding gas. Some people burned down their cars and their houses. They were selling it from, what, $3 a gallon all the way to $16 a gallon yeah. on, on the black market. It was, it was crazy. So it was a, kind of a wake-up call for some people as to what can happen when you don't take cybersecurity seriously. But let's talk about cybersecurity as a whole. Um, it's this, this topic is coming out of Columbia Engineering, and they mentioned how a lot of these cybersecurity threats and vulnerabilities come down to the memory. These memory attacks, um, these vulnerabilities make up 75% of the issues that Microsoft encounters with their platform. And then there's Google Zero Day, which they have analysts that work on zero day attacks. These are vulnerabilities that exist that people like Google or Microsoft should be aware of aren't until it's deployed to production where everyone can have access to it. And the majority of those were also related to memory. Okay, so, so basically, most of the ways in which a hacker could you know, compromise your system or do things like the pipeline hack, at least 75% of those are related to memory. So exactly. it seems like figuring out these memory memory vulnerabilities is very very important exactly but so how, let's talk about memory and what, what's happening here right so at, at the very low level you're using your code to assign a value to memory like here's this variable you are it and then at some other point i'm going to reference you this address to pull that memory again what can happen is that you can have buffer overflow so let's say you have address one and address two next to each other Address one can only accept four characters, but you assign it five. That fifth element then goes into the next address, address two. These attackers, these third parties, take advantage of this to write values to address two that they want you to pull from later on to embed their own malware. Okay, so this does that make this sense? Kind of Was that a good explanation? Me, yeah, this kind of reminds me of like when I was growing up. If I was trying to remember a phone number. Um, I'd remember the first six digits and ask my brother to remember the last four. But what you're saying is these hackers would be like my brother if he intentionally changed these last four numbers he gave me, so I got the wrong phone number. That's a great way to think about it, yeah. So uh, how do we get around this, right? And these researchers pointed out that there are, like, there are applications made to make sure this doesn't happen. But unfortunately, they slow down your system. They tend to use a lot of energy and they require many updates and patches. And because of all that, most people don't use them. Okay. So they knew that they had to come up with a way that is efficient and basically uses this the architecture that people are already used to. So what they realized is that these addresses, these pointer addresses, they're, they have 64 bits allocated to them and they're only using an X amount of it. The remainder is left to be used by whatever and the whatever they came up with was this header. The header can be used as a flag to verify that whoever is assigning a value is actually legitimate. It's coming from a trusted source, like a programmer, instead of some you know, third party that wants to destroy your whole system. Okay, so instead of slowing down the performance of your computer or taking extra memory, it's using the unused space, the stuff that's already not being tapped, and basically you know, adding a signature in there saying, this came from a source that we can trust, so that when you've got instructions that aren't from this source, you can distinguish and say, boom, that, that's from an outside source, don't trust it. Exactly. So they're not adding overhead, and they're able to distinguish whenever an intruder does come into play. What's interesting is that you can keep the same process going. You don't have to stop the execution of anything, but when an intruder tries to access your system and rewrite, I mean, overwrite a portion of your memory, you can raise a flag and be like, hey, everyone look over here. Someone's trying to do something wrong. We should be taking a look at this. Okay. So where, where, what does this lead us to? The, the reason this is cool is because it uses the same structure, the same architecture. So no one has to change anything foundational. Software engineers can compile their code. They, they named this system Zero. They can compile their code using Zero so that it adheres to these policies. But if they're using third-party software that doesn't adhere to these policies, they can whitelist them so that the system doesn't incorrectly flag them as, again, an intruder right. or a third party. So 
I can trust my code, even if I don't use the zero system, I can whitelist it. Exactly. But if there's other instructions that are coming in that aren't whitelisted and aren't from zero, they say, hey, take a look at this. Exactly. Now, the, the reason all of this is so important is because preventing cyber attacks as much as you can before you deploy your code is inc incredibly important, as we found out not too long ago. But Dan, I, I don't know if you know about this, but I, I was listening to a uh, Wall Street Journal podcast when all this attack happened. A lot of attackers want ransom, right? Like, hey, we shut down your system. We won't let it go back up until you give us an X amount of money. It seems like the United States government has blacklisted certain groups so that if they shut down your company, you are legally not allowed to pay them any money because of their affiliations with the United States government, um, the kind of activities they might be doing. So you could have an enterprise that is responsible for billions of dollars of exchanges on a daily basis like Visa. And, and if you're legally not allowed to recover your data. You're legally not allowed to pay the ransomware to um, get, get your system back. Okay, so, so it makes it even more important, even more critical to focus on reducing these type of threats, reducing exactly. these type of vulnerabilities. And the, the Colombian engineers were like, you know what? You, you guys have a high standard for what you want your security system to be. You don't want a lot of overhead. We totally get it. Here's our system. This is how it works. Everyone can get up to speed now. And it's a great name too, zero, because it takes zero extra space. Exactly. It you know does zero to decreasing the performance. I like it. Everyone should follow their naming convention. Seriously. Yeah. yeah. 